Hey, this is Mike. I'm here at Sparks Toyota in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I am really excited to show you this 2015 Toyota Avalon. This is the Touring Sport Edition. That's why it looks so awesome. Of course, there's some awesome stuff on the inside, too, so check it out. First thing I noticed when I looked at this car is these wheels. I mean, they are nice. 18 inch alloy wheels painted with the black, and then you have the aluminum, the alloy popping out there that gives you a really sporty design. And it accents the four wheel ventilated disc brakes as well. You can see it has the touring sport badge there. Take a look at the front now this one has the quad hid projector headlights check it out it's got two mini projector headlights that are powered by hid technology and then you have the reflector high beams there there in the center as well as the the fog lights down here have a lens to give them a broad sweeping view of the road really cool I think those are quadratic or something like that they're quad HID headlights I think there's a certain term for it but anyways that's what they are so here in the front you can see it has a really cool wide stance with a cool looking grille accented with some chrome let me know what you think about that in the comments for sure all right, let's uh, swing over here. Now the, the glass has been tinted by the dealer, so it doesn't normally come with tinted windows, but I highly recommend it, especially when you have a black on black car like this. Now this is really cool. <laughs> well, there's lots of cool things about it. So here's the inside and inside the passenger door, it's all black and then you have some shiny black accent plastic there, but check out this blue stitching. It just kind of pops out you out at you and you're like man that's cool looking and uh so that's one of the things you got the avalon badge there in the threshold black soft comfortable leather perforated heated seats here in the front with some pretty decent bolstering and you do have they are power seats here in the front as well and you do have some some blue accents over here too which i'll show you more when we get inside glove compartments pretty small not 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 fantastic nothing fancy there all right let's take a look at the back there's the inside of the back door still has the blue stitching there just like the front back seats are perforated comfortable leather with the blue stitching in them as well this is a uh Part of the Toyo Guard, how to maintain your vehicle, like the leather conditioner and stuff like that. Now here's an armrest. You do have this pass through right here to access the trunk. Armrest is also a cup holder, and you can always put it out of the way if you want. You got some rear vents back here for the back seat drivers. Look at the legroom back here. Tons of space for the back seat people. Plenty of room. Alrighty. So normally I would use the key to pop the trunk to check in there, but since it's running, it doesn't allow me to do that. But there is the ability to open it up with this button. So it pops up here, I lift it up all the way. Then you have that massive trunk there, plenty of room for putting stuff in there. You go to Lowe's, you pick up some stuff load it up christmas shopping all right so in here's your spare tire tools and your spare tire underneath that but yeah plenty of room back here you don't have to worry about space in the back of an avalon backup camera lens is back here as well dual exhaust how sporty is that now the 3.5 liter v6 has 
that this vehicle has has 268 horsepower and it's made it up with a six-speed automatic transmission so the Avalon has a proximity key and here's the key itself and so basically just having the key on you you could just walk up to the to the car and you don't just keep the key in your pocket and you just walk up touch the handle unlocks if you want to relock it you just put put your finger right there it relocks so you get in to, to get in once it's locked you just put your hand here it senses your hand it senses the key and it senses the proximity of the key as long as this one within a few feet of the vehicle so the key in your pocket or your purse you can actually use the vehicle and um, without actually taking the key out of your pocket once you get in the vehicle all you have to do to start it is put your foot on the brake and push the start button starts right up like I said senses the key so you're good to go All right, let's take a look under the hood. So you reach in here just to the to the right of that Toyota symbol there. Actually, you push up on it. And once you get it to a certain point, it'll hold itself up because it does have the shocks there. And unfortunately, they covered most of the engine up with plastic, so we kind of have to look at an angle here to see the actual engine. But it is a 3.5 liter, 268 horsepower V6 that will fly. It is plenty of power, more than what you really need. Maybe not as much as you want, but it's got more than what you need. And it gets really good gas mileage as well. Wish they didn't plus cover it up with plastic because that just kind of, that just annoys me. But anyways, all right, let's take a look on the inside. All right, here I am inside the 2015 Toyota Avalon, and man, this is a nice car. I mean, just look at these blue accents, shiny blue accents. Hopefully you can see it. it goes all the way down here and around here and back in here. That matches up with the blue stitching, but yeah, this is nice. So let's check out the door here it does have full automatic up and down mirror control um, window controls for the rear and the front power door locks and this button is for um, if you wanted to make it to where the, the rear door windows will not roll up and down and then you've got the uh, side mirror controls here you just have to choose a side which one you want here is for your preset for your driver seat your power driver seat all right, so here's some buttons here. That's to open up your trunk like I showed you before. This is for your uh, traction control. You can turn that off if you need to. And this is your blind spot monitoring system. You can, it's on now and you can turn it on or off. And it's gonna let you know if somebody's in your blind spot. And how it does that, uh, one thing, it illuminates this little indicator there on the heated side mirror. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Yeah, right there, you see that little indicator? There's the heat, heated indicator, but right here is the blind spot monitoring system, and that will illuminate and let you know if somebody's in your blind spot. Now, if you put your, if you put your uh, turn signal on, then it will alert you in other ways, audio or, or something here on the dash. I'm not really sure, but I know it will kind of get your attention even more if you, you know, prepare to turn into the other lane. All right, so let's take a look at the steering wheel. It is a really comfortable leather-wrapped steering wheel with the black stitching here on the inside. And it is a kind of a sporty design with the bolsters here on both sides. It does have the paddle shifters on the back to add to the sportiness. Plus you have a bunch of buttons here. Before I go into that, let me show you. This is the headlights and it does have the daytime running lights that you can turn off or you can have them automatic, uh, the lights, or you can put the parking lights on or the headlights like that. I would prefer the automatic part. Now the fog lights are controlled with this button here, the switch. Alrighty, and then there is your windshield washer, wipers and washers control there on the right. So back to the steering wheel. Uh, it has cruise control down here. You just have to make sure, push, make sure you push this button in, turns it on, you can set it by pushing it down and you can change your speed like that cancel you pull it in 
right here, you have this is your phone and your voice recognition system all together. So somebody calls you. Once you have your, you, of course, you have to have your Bluetooth phone paired with the system, which takes like five seconds. And as you're driving along, if somebody calls you, the radio will dim down, and then it starts ringing. You push this button, and you just say hello, and you start talking, and when you're finished talking, you push this button. It's really simple. It keeps your hands on the wheel, eyes on the road. Super good safety feature in my book. Now, if you want to make a call, you can push this button, and this will, you can, and you say, call John Smith, or whoever happens to be in your phone book. You just have to say it just like it's spelled in your phone book and it will call them and then you can you know talk to them and then you hang up here also with the voice recognition you can also tell you know tell the car to turn to a certain, a certain station or go to a specific address in the navigation system or you know w there's lots of different commands that you can do with the voice recognition really cool this is the display button that corresponds with this screen here so you can change and get different information just by pushing that uh, cycles through a whole system here but uh, let's see here, miles per gallon, miles per hour, distance to empty, uh, average fuel economy, uh, current fuel economy, eco drive level, um, you know, as you're driving, you get, gives you the ability to, you know, see how much gas, you know, how economical you are. And then you got some settings there. All right, so here on the left, this is your volume for your radio. This is to change through uh, the, the, um, like say you, the seat, the when it depends on what you, what you're doing. So like right now it's in FM. So right now I can use this right and left to change through the stations. Okay, I could push up and down to change through the presets. So, but it, like say if I'm in a CD, if I got a CD in there playing, I can change through the CD tracks with this. Um, I can you know. There's all kinds of different ways, things that you can do, depending on what screen you're in, you can adjust, you know, go into different places on the screen. And that's what the intention of this for is for. The center button is for to accept whatever, you know, you're hovering over that specific station, and then you push the center button, and it goes to that station, that kind of thing. Alrighty. Alright. So here is your whole center stack, entertainment, all kinds of stuff here. Information has this big dial for volume and a big dial here to tune through the stations. Pretty traditional with the big dials left and right. So that's why they, you know, most manufacturers at least have them in there somewhere. So there they are, right and left of the, uh, the center touchscreen. Now you have these soft buttons on the outside of the screen. They're not actually buttons, you just put your finger there and it touch it, it's like a touch screen in a way, and it senses your finger and goes to that particular screen. And um, this is like, you say, your audio, AM, FM, satellite radio, Bluetooth audio, you would also have this blacked out, an auxiliary input, and a CD. And once you start using them, they will um, you know, illuminate. Plus you have this USB port. Which I'll show you all that stuff in a second. So the CD player is up here, you can eject it with that. There's a home button, and the home button is your radio, also, this is where your phone information would be, and it gives you a little mini screen of uh, your navigation. So, like say, if I want to go to the navigation, I can just push that. I can put in a destination, all that good stuff. This button right here, apps, I can push that, and it goes into your the ability to basically quickly go into the different parts. Your audio, the navigation, your phone system, uh, you can set up different things. You have traffic and weather through your HD system, HD radio system. And then you have a, uh, like a uh, settings type thing, maintenance there. And then you have some soft buttons up here, seek through the tracks, your phone, and play and pause button there as well. So down here, uh, this is there's a clock, there's exterior temperature there. You can see it's extremely hot today. I mean, it is seriously hot. But the temperature, um, I mean the time, you can change the clock right here with these buttons here. But the rest of it is for your climate control. So you've got your dual zone, you got your temperature on both sides, and you have the, um, you know, where you want the air to blow. Uh, you can ha also have it for the defrosters there. You can have an automatic setting where you just set the temperature and let it go, or you can, you know, change 
and adjust the fan speed and all that stuff. And you can also sync the driver and passengers towards the same thing. So if I sync it, so if I, I change the temperature here, it's for the whole vehicle. But all I have to do is just start changing this and it, it unsyncs it. All right, so here's something pretty cool. Uh, you do have this kind of like a place to put stuff right here, like so. Uh, but also, you can lift this up, and you see it has this little groove here for wires to go in and out. Reason why is you lift this up, and there you go. There's your USB and your auxiliary inputs, as well as two 12-volt power supplies. And you've got this storage pocket there. So I can literally put my phone right down in there, like so, and close it up, charge it. I can have wires running in and out, that kind of thing. So pretty neat little pocket system right there. I really think that's a pretty cool design, whoever came up with that. So you got some cup holders here, kind of small, not, you know, not too big, not too small area. There's your shifter, and let's go ahead and put it in reverse. And when I put it in reverse, you can see the uh, backup camera pops up here. And you know it is a wide-angle view, so it does have some guidelines there, and, and and because it goes, you know, kind of distorted around the edges since it's a wide, wide view lens, sort of like a GoPro. So go down to neutral, and then let's go down the drive. So in drive, you're just driving around, everything's fine, changes through the six speeds, no problem. Now, if you want to manually change through the gears, you just push it over here to the left. Now you can ratchet shifter ratchet shift now it's in sport mode so I can go right through through them gears have full control over the gear ratio of the car and this is you know this is useful for being sporty but also it's useful for downshifting if you're going down a steep steep grade and you need to get some engine braking going so that's some pretty cool stuff there all right so right here we have um, your heated seats. You have to push them in. You adjust them. I'm not going to turn them on now because it's extremely hot already. But in the winter time, this is really handy um, for you know getting you warm before the engine actually warms up. You do have eco mode, which tells the car that you want to get the best gas mileage. Normal driving mode, which is you know still good gas mileage, but not quite as um, gives you a little bit more power, I guess. And then sport mode. When you put it in that sport mode. It's telling the car that you don't care about gas mileage, you just want the highest performance the car is able to um, give you. So that's what the sport mode does. And also I think it might stiffen up the steering wheel um, a little bit. Yeah, stiffens up the steering wheel. I could actually feel it immediately. So it's not so smooth. And um, so that way you get more feel of the road and stuff as you're driving. So that's pretty cool. So I'm going to go to eco mode there. All right, so this is a center console here, and it does slide forward and back, so you can fine-tune it if you want to. But also it lifts up, and you have a storage area. You do have this tray that slides in and out, and you have, you know, a place to put some stuff. You do also have a, a power supply in there as well. Right there, 12 volt. All right, so up here, is your rear, rear view mirror you see it does have a compass telling me that I'm facing east and the home link here buttons there's that's for your garage door opener if you have one and um, you can turn your compass on and off there if you wanted to also it has an auto dim rear view mirror and you can turn that on and off with this button here and it will sense light and and so like say on a real bright day it's going to stay bright but at night time it dims down a little bit to be easier on your eyes when other cars are behind you with their high beams on it or their their lights shining in your face so it does dim down at night time that's like the night mode there alrighty so up here we have um, a place to put your sunglasses and you also have some tap lights so you have a quick reading light you can also turn all the lights on here or you can make it to where when the door opens it, all the lights will turn on um, right there or off whatever you want to do and it does have a sunroof so we can open that up and we can get some sun shining in here and if we want to we can tilt it up like so or we can open it
get some airflow through here. But today's kind of a warm day, so I can close it up and I can close the shade. And that way no light comes in. So pretty cool there. Visors have mirrors and lights. Also, it will slide out and in to get that right spot right where you need it. Alrighty, let's take a look at the visibility back there. That's some nice seats, aren't they? This whole car is nice. It's better than nice. That term has lost its meanings. People, people use it so much. But it is a nice car. <laughs> I don't know. It is sweet. So anyway, let me know what you think. Also, um, if you could, if you have any experience with a vehicle like this, let's say you you own one, or you know somebody owns one, or you're taking one for a test drive, anything like that, please let me know in the comments. Let everybody know what you think. Um, if there's anything that you know that I missed in the in this video, maybe I got wrong or uh, you know didn't represent it quite right, please let let me know in the comments. That'll really help me out. Also, help everybody else out that's watching this video. So they can really benefit to the to the fullest extent. Because I definitely am doing this for you. I do not work for Sparks Toyota. I work for you. So um, if you can help me out with sharing the videos, that would be really helpful. Also subscribe to my channel, stuff like that. And um, you know, of course, you can send me a tip. I'd really appreciate that. That helps keep everything moving. So, anyways, thank you for watching, and thank you to Sparks Toyota for allowing me to show off this awesome car to the world. And I'll see you next time.